Hey, welcome to Journey at Home. We've got a great message from Jared Martin today, plus an awesome song from our band. Let's get started. Everybody, I'm Lauren, and it's great to have you with us today. If it's your first time tuning in, we want you to know we are here for you. Just scan the QR code on the screen or go to journeyathome.online and we'll email you a Dunkin' Donuts gift card. You can't beat that. Today, Jared Martin has a special message for us about how to pass on our faith to the next generation. Jared currently serves as our Director of Adult and Student Ministries, and you're going to find his message today very encouraging. So make yourself at home and let's get started. Hey, this is an amazing community for families. I know you all agree with me. This community truly values families and kids and students. You can see it in the ways we put money and time into creating opportunities for development in so many different areas of growth for the next generation. I mean, just think about the thousands of dollars and thousands of hours that volunteers will spend this year at fields, courts, and arenas. Hot, sweaty hours sitting on bleachers or in the sun or waiting for hours for other games to finish and schedules running behind and staying in hotels for faraway tournaments. But man, <laughs> isn't all of that worth it? I mean, parents and grandparents and volunteer coaches will celebrate those boys and girls after big wins, those competitions where they gave everything and they executed as they were taught. And it's so fun to watch them do something they didn't think they could do, but you knew they could. And the joy on their faces, I, I just think of my son's little league team playing against the best team in the league. 
and just fighting and fighting the whole game. Our record was terrible, but in the end, we pulled out a win against this team because our team kept doing little things. It was truly amazing. But it's even worth all the money and time we spend when they lose or when they're crying because they didn't get to play or compete because of an injury or the coach decided they weren't ready for the level of competition. And we console them and we help them understand and encourage them to keep going. Why? Why is all that worth it even when the outcome isn't what we'd hoped? It's not like the vast majority of kids are going to go pro in sports. We'll even put up with less than stellar coaches. We'll spend extra time and money on training in the offseason. We'll put in extra time with skills camps. Why? Because when it all wraps up, when their career is over, we know that they'll have picked up some valuable life lessons. All of those challenges and situations will form their character and their values. Like, teamwork makes the dream work. Uh, we can learn from losing. Hard work pays off. Excellence requires sacrifice. How you practice is how you play. We hope they'll take all these lessons and use them in any realm of life. And it's not just sports. Think about the creative writing camps, the Lego robotics camps, science camps, internships, clubs, contests, reading programs, speech, theater, band, choir, art programs. We've got so much support for the development of our next generation here. We, I'm, you, do all of this because you believe that if you can develop their character and their values and somehow spark their passion and talent, you'll help them be ready for the difficult world ahead of them. I just want to encourage you today. I love living here in this area, and one of the reasons is because you're so committed to the next generation. That's how I know you'll be on board for the challenge I have for you today. Because regardless of how successful the next generation is at youth sports, or the number of degrees they earn, or the awards they receive, or the amount of money they'll make through hard work and creativity, here's what I know. We all want more than anything for the next generation to avoid the pitfalls and decisions that could wreck their lives. Because we've seen it happen to people around us. And we've got our own stories from our own young days, don't we? How many decisions did you make between 13 and 25 that are still affecting you today? How many of your regrets came from chasing something that you found out later wasn't worth all that energy and attention you gave it? What kind of price did you have to pay because you didn't have anyone to warn you about what might happen if you kept going down the road you were headed? What about your college debt and credit cards that have kept you from feeling financially free? What about the romantic relationships left you feeling betrayed and lonely and worth nothing? What about the corners you cut to make that deal and the people you hurt along the way, all in the name of making more money and making a name for yourself? What about the resentment and anger you've been carrying since your mom had that affair, your dad just disappeared? I know that's a lot of questions, but think about it. What would you pay if you could go back and save yourself some of the heartache? What would you pay to have had someone besides your parents caring for you and supporting you? And maybe you had some folks like that, a coach or a teacher or a good family friend, but you didn't realize how amazing it was until much later in life. What do you wish someone had done for you to help you see your blind spots? And who was looking out for your best? Listen, I'm not naive. I know we can't live a perfect life and we can't avoid all our regrets or bad decisions. But I also know that when we have people around us who love us, the damage is less and the regrets are fewer. So what would you give for your grandkids and your kids and your nieces and nephews and students you know to have those kinds of supporting, caring relationships in their life right now. Because here's my challenge for you. You can be one of those people for the students you care about. And you may not realize it, but we've built our entire family ministry around making this the kind of place where your kids and students can build relationships with people who want to be that kind of caring, supportive influence for them. And do you know that what will make the greatest impact on the development and decisions in every area of growth and development for this next generation? A community of people committed to living out their faith in every area of life. That's right. It's just really that simple. The next generation needs to see a community of people living out their faith in every area of life. Jesus actually talked about this kind of faith and the impact it can have. In Matthew 5, in his most famous sermon, Jesus says this, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. What's so amazing is Jesus is saying this to his normal, everyday disciples. These weren't the religious elites. 
the well-trained rabbis, the ultra-devoted priests. These were fishermen, tax collectors, and farmers. And Jesus calls them the light of the world. Together, they shine like a town built on a hill. And that kind of light can't be hidden. Jesus says that their lives of faith and their love for others, their living for others, is a light to the rest of the world. Now think about it. Light is hopeful. Light is powerful. Light draws people in from the dark. Jesus was saying that as a collective, unified group, their light would draw other people in. Here's what this means practically. If we want to be a light for the next generation, kids and students will grow a stronger faith when they know five adults in addition to their parents who care for them and model faith for them. Research shows that when students have this network of five relationships growing in their own faith becomes the norm. Parents, this is why we think consistent attendance on Sundays is so important. There's nothing magical about church attendance, but you know this. Trusting relationships can't form without consistent interaction. I'm not naive. I know you can't be here, there every Sunday. I'm not going to be there every Sunday. I know the past year has been difficult to build relationships, but I also know this. Your kids and students don't get to know the other adults we've trained and prepared to help care for your kids unless they're here consistently connecting with those adults. And your kids are not going to be open and honest about their struggles or their doubts about God, or their anger and frustration they're feeling at home unless they know and trust the people here. I don't want you to feel guilty about missing church. That's not helpful. I want you to understand that you have an amazing opportunity. The relationships that we're trying to build with your kids and students are really important and could be exactly what your kid needs most right now. Now, if you're a grandparent or a college student, or maybe you're a married couple without kids and, and you want to make a huge difference in the next generation, then you should be serving in one of our kids or student areas every week. Why? Because you remember what it was like. You didn't always want to talk to your parents about your faith and questions about life and your worries and your fears. Some of you are sitting here every week and you're missing the opportunity to build a relationship with a kid or student and change the way they think about themselves and God. You don't have to know the answers to their hard questions. We're going to train you, give you the questions to ask, and we will help you feel confident and ready to care and support this next generation. If you love God and you love kids or students, they need you right now more than ever. And college students and high school students, li listen, this is why we don't hold separate worship services for your age group. While it might be more comfortable for you in the short term to be in a room with your own age group, it's not what's best for your faith growth and development. You need real relationships with five adults other than your parents. And if you never get to know older people, you'll never get the benefit of their faith journey with God. We want you mixing it up with people of all ages by attending one service, so it will remind you that church is a group of people, not a production aimed at your preferences. And we want you to serve on one of our teams during the other service because it gives you a chance to get to know some other adults. I promise, it will be one of the best things that you ever do. So my challenge today is quite simple. Take your next step of faith so the next generation will see a faith worth following. The next generation needs to see real people they know taking real steps of faith in order to see a real God do something only He can do. When we trust God with our next step, we become a city on a hill. Parents, the next generation needs to see you praying and seeking God's wisdom in your work and finances. They need to see you serving and giving generously. They need to see you asking forgiveness when you blow up in anger. And they need to see you showing great mercy and grace when they screw up. And church folks, the next generation needs to see you modeling faith too. They need to get to know you and hear your stories of how you're trying to honor God at work and out in the community. And they need to hear your words of encouragement as they express their doubts and fears. They need your listening ear when they're confused and scared and don't know what else to do. They may even need your advice at times when they're too afraid to talk to mom or dad. I'm telling you, this works. I know because I've seen it with my own son. And I know what you're thinking. Of course, you're a pastor. Guys, I, I just want to be honest with you. I'm not an amazing parent. What I'm going to tell you has nothing to do with my career and has everything to do with the community of people that are taking steps of faith right here. I was a high school English teacher when Journey got started. Our family has never done a family devotional. <laughs> I don't pray with my kids at bedtime 
or when they wake up and I don't teach them Bible verses in the car. I forget to pray at dinner time when they're together, and I forget to tell them about what they, I forget to ask them what they learned about at church. Uh, listen, last summer, we were trying to establish a routine of watching church online as a family like the rest of you were. My wife and I would be up to watch the 8 a.m. live stream, and my son would roll out of bed around 8.05, probably because I turned the volume up too loud on the TV. And we would sort of watch the online service together. My wife was usually doing a workout. Uh, I was taking notes so I could write high school group questions, and my son would eat breakfast. But I remember one day in June, Isaac asked me, Dad, when are we going back to church? And I was honestly very concerned by his question. In my head, I was thinking he was asking because he didn't really want to go back. I know I was kind of getting used to staying in my PJs. Watching from home was kind of nice, and not having to deal with the logistics of setting all the stuff up on Sundays was, if I'm being really honest, was very restful. But I didn't want my son to not want to go back because I knew that what he needed is what we all needed, sometimes serving and worshiping and working alongside other people. So I did the scary thing. I told him the truth. I hope we can go back in August, son, but I don't know when it will be. It could be a lot longer than that. And here's how I know that what our church does works. His reply was this. I miss Sundays and being on production team and making sure we have a great service so people who don't know Jesus can have a place to hear about him. If we're going to help the next generation avoid big regrets and reach their potential, it will take all of us. They need to see a whole community of people taking their next steps of faith, not just their parents. They don't need a perfect community, but a community willing to keep growing. So what's your next step of faith that you need to take today? Let me pray with you. Father in heaven, I want to thank you that I am around a bunch of people who are trying to figure out what their next step of faith looks like. God, it's not just me that my kids are looking at and depending on for a model of faith. God, help me to do my best to model faith for my kids. God, I thank you for the small group leaders like James and Nathan who are investing in my son and for Chelsea and Beth who are investing in my middle school daughter, for Mindy Rose and Kinsey who are down there in elementary with my other daughter. God, thank you for those people who are investing time every week in the relationship with those kids because my kids need it. And God, I just want to pray for the people watching this that they'll continue to take steps of faith, whatever's in front of them, not perfect steps of faith, but just the next step. And then I pray for some people to come alongside our kids, this next generation, to keep investing in them, keep caring for them, keep building relationships. Because God, we want to be a city on a hill for this community. And the first group of people I pray that sees our light are our kids. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed today and found it inspiring and helpful. Next week, Matt's back with a new series called Life Well Lived. Everybody ends up somewhere, but you want to be someone who ends up somewhere on purpose, and Matt will show us how. Here's a sneak peek of next week's message. You know, everybody ends up somewhere in life. Very few people end up somewhere on purpose. So how do you become one of those people? One of those extraordinary people who leave a legacy that's bigger than and beyond you. Well, you can be one of those people, and the first step is finding your why. I'll show you how in this edition of Journey at Home. I can't wait for next week. Now, before we go, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of this great content. And also take a minute to share today's message with a friend who might find it helpful. We'll see you next week at the CFSP Center or right here with Journey at Home.